Well, one of the great bands of the 70s are Chicory Tip and that iconic number one back in 1972, Son of My Father, is still fondly remembered by many people 40 years on. Now, it was the first single to use the Moog synthesizer and I'm delighted to say that all four members of the band are still very much with us and two of them are still going out live, namely drummer Brian Shearer and guitarist Rick Foster. Well, as most of you will know, I've been a bit of a Chicory Tip fan for as long as I can remember, Son of My Father being the first record that I bought back in 70. I'm delighted to say that joining me on the phone today from Maidstone in Kent is Rick Foster. Rick, welcome to the programme. Hello. Now, 40 years. It's incredible to think that Son of My Father is 40 years old. Does it seem that long? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It seems like it's only a few years ago. <laughs> if we go back even further, it was you and bass player Barry Major who formed the band called The Sonics, and that was yep. back in 1961, over 50 years ago, when you were both uh, still at school, and that would be infants, wouldn't it? We, we started school together on the same day when we were five years old, and we, st- we left on the same day. We went through school uh, in every, every, every class together. One day, Barry called round to me and said, uh, you've got to come to, a, come to a youth club. He said, there's a great group playing there, and they play all Cliff and the Shadows numbers. He said, you, you, I'm sure you'll you love them, sort of thing, you know. We, we went and saw this group. They was called the Nighthawks, and they was guys of our own age. From then on, uh, we, we said that night about forming a group, which was... A little bit tongue in cheek. We got we got a group together and uh, yeah, we called ourselves the Sonics. Mainly, mainly because we had Burns Trisonic guitars. Oh right, so that's the story behind that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now six years, of course, of that band, and in in 1967, it was you two with Mick Russell and lead singer Peter Hewson. And I think uh, Barry thought it would be a good idea to change the name to Chicory Tip. And again, no no big real story, I suppose, about the the name Chicory Tip. We we knew we was looking for a new, new name. Well, we didn't. W- we just wanted to get rid of, like, the Beatles, the Shadows, the whatever. We just wanted a name with Chet, like, Middle of the Road or something like that, you know, Piggity Witch. In actual fact, we, we, I, can, I can remember to this day where we was. We was in an army barracks just outside of Maidstone, and we was on with a group called the Manish Boys that night. Believe it or not, David Bowie was, was uh, one, of, one of those people. And we, we, we was the support act. And we come off stage there, and we he, we, we were just through the, went through the dressing room door. And I don't know where Barry had got this from, and I still don't know to this day. The only thing I can relate to it is maybe um, Camp Coffee years ago used to be made of well, they still sell it as far as I know. It used to be made of chicory, and he said, "What about the name Chicory Tip?" I, I thought, "Yeah, what a great name, you know." And a change of name and a change of fortune as well. Yeah. Yeah, a few years afterwards, yeah. So how did you meet Peter Hewson? He was at school with us, but he was he was of the year uh, above us. It was it was our rhythm guitarist, actually, in the Sonics. He said, a mate of mine wants to sing in, sing in a band. Any, any chance we can give him a go, sort of thing? I said, yeah, yeah. It was job enough for us uh, in the first place to, to learn, learn guitar. So I wasn't really interested too much in singing at that point, you know, because... We, we was getting ourselves together um, instrumentally. In actual fact, we all, all the guys in Chicory Tip, have been to South School in Maidstone. But even the guy what's with us now, Peter Giles, and he's, he's our bass player at the moment, he, he, he was also in the same class as myself and Barry. Southborough School in Maidstone in Kent? Yeah. My goodness, I hope they've got a plaque on the wall. <laughs> I don't think they have, actually, but... <laughs> Yeah, they should have, shouldn't they? <laughs> Not too many success stories out of Maidstone, I would have thought. In actual fact, we're the only band to have ever, ever got in the charts from Maidstone. And to get a number one as well, you know. <laughs> now, Peter, of course, a very distinctive voice, uh, hadn't he? And, of course, you managed to get the elusive contract, the record contract that everybody chases. And you went with CBS Records. CBS, of course, absolutely huge at the time. Yes. Yeah. So, so how did it all come about? A friend of mine, his girlfriend, knew Roger Easterby, and there was a, a dance at um, a place called Tudor House in Maidstone, and uh, there was a group on uh, w- w- supporting Vanity Fair, who he'd also got at the time, who, who'd had success. I was there on, on the actual night, and they wasn't that, that brilliant. And unbeknown to me, uh, she, she said to Roger, cool, I don't, don't think much of that, that, that group you got on with Vanity Fair, supporting Vanity Fair tonight. And he sort of shrugged his shoulders, saying, "Yeah, they're not very good, are they?" You know. She said, "Well, next time you want to want a support group, I know of someone. 
He said, oh, who's that, you know? She said, well, Chicory Tip. We said, oh, how do we get in touch with them then? And she put us in touch with Roger. We played for him a few times at Tudor House. And then all of a sudden, uh, one Sunday evening, he came up and said, I've got a record here. He said, I don't know whether you'd be interested in, in uh, recording it. It's called Monday After Sunday. And uh, that was our first record with Roger. <laughs> Mick left the band to get married and in came Brian Shearer. He fell in love with this girl in, uh, in Wales. <laughs> in actual fact, he come down to me on the Sunday evening and said, I'm, go- I'm going to wa- I'm gonna go to Wales, I've fallen in love with this girl, blah, blah, blah. So I said, well, if you've got to go, you've got to go. So he went and we was playing the very next night in Deal and we hadn't got a, a, a drummer. And my mother said to me, there's a little guy who's younger than, younger than you, he's got a uh, there's a drum kit set up in his, in his front room, and I, and I see it when I go up on the bus. She said, I don't know whether he'd be any good for you, you know. So I went along there in the dinner time and uh, approached his mother, because Brian was at work at the time, and she said, oh, no, 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 he's, he's, he's in a band. He, he wouldn't want to play with you. I said, no, 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 we're not asking him to, to play with us permanently. I said, perhaps he'd help us out tonight, you know. Anyway, he come home and said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to play with you, you know, so... He did a few kicks with us, and then we started putting some money money in his hand. What, <laughs> what he never saw us uh, seen the lights of before. And next thing you know, um, he was our permanent drummer. And of course, Monday after Sunday was the first single. Then it was My Girl Sunday. So you had two singles, both with the the name, the word yeah, Sunday. Yeah, I like that, wasn't it? But but they didn't really do too much. But uh, then no. came Excuse Me Baby, which was the third single, and that got you onto top of the pops, which must have been a real thrill. But unfortunately, that clip has gone has been wiped by the BBC. I was going to say, there are very few chicory tip clips about, aren't there? There's one for What's Your Name from a German uh, television programme. There's obviously the famous Son of My Father one, which gets repeated a lot. And the promo video of Son of My Father is still in existence. But they're the only three that I've actually uncovered. Yes, and I I think think you're going to find there's not much more about either. (laughs) There's supposed to be a Belgian television company which, which did um, a, a, a grief Christina there was still no sign of an album there because back in those days I suppose the record companies tended to push a lot of singles out but very few albums yeah it was really you, you, you had to you had to get had to do the business with, with a, a very a very very big uh, single at the time you know before that they'd even think think about doing an album and I suppose in these days, you probably get one single, and if it doesn't chart, then you're out. Those days, they did actually give you a bit more time, didn't they? Three or four singles at least. Yes. I don't 
don't know how much, how much more time we would, we would have had if, if we hadn't have had son of my father, but um, that was our fifth record, and I suppose we were very, very lucky, really, you know, to have gone that far. Because your fourth single was I Love Onions, and that was effectively not promoted due to the fact that Roger Eads, Easterby, of course, discovered this German song, which I yeah. think was Michael Holm and English lyrics by Giorgio Moroder and Giorgio himself had recorded the single which was of course Son of My Father and yeah. then what happened next of course was something akin to a James Bond movie it was very secretive what went on tell us a story we'd got um, I Love Onions out at the time and no sooner that that went out Roger got hold of this copy of uh, Giorgio Moroder's song in actual fact to promote as, as a single at the time you couldn't record a song unless it had been played and logged, because every, every song which is played by, the, by any radio station has to be logged. So Roger went down to a, 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 some little radio station in Bristol and got this song played, and so once it was played and logged, there it, there it was to be um, covered by someone. And uh, he, said, he, he phoned me up at work at the time and said, um, get your behind over my house tonight. He said, I, th- I, think, I've, I think I've got the one we've been waiting for. <laughs> And uh, we we recorded it. I mean, so I love, I love onions. All the promotion just just stopped immediately because he wanted to get this out. Because of the the secrecy, what happened is you couldn't get hold of the lyrics to the song, so the words to your record was different to the one that Giorgio recorded. If we'd have known at the time, being as we put some different lyrics to it, we could have also put our names on, on the record. And, and got a got a cut of the writing, which we didn't know at the time. <laughs> <laughs> In hindsight, it's a wonderful thing. Yes, and we, 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 we would have made um, a fair bit of money out of that, I think. I think so. Do you know the total of Son of My Father in millions? Three or four million by this time, I would think. I mean, no sooner it was out. I mean, we had a, we had a silver record presented to us by Noel Edmonds within about a couple of weeks. So it was selling some ridiculous amount uh, per day, so... It, it, it topped the 250,000 uh, within a couple of weeks, you know. Of course, the Moog synthesizer, that sound was kind of going to define the band over the next couple of years, wasn't it? But none, none of the band actually played keyboards because it was studio engineer Chris Thomas, I think, that, that did the solo on that. No, it wasn't Chris Thomas. He programmed the Moog. Right. So Moog who actually played uh, it? Sequences. It was another, another guy, and, and I've... I've I've lost touch of uh, what his name was, actually. He appeared on, to- on the Top of the Pops clip with us. But, of course, the interesting thing, and, and one of the great things about having you on the radio show today, is to kind of dispel a few rumours, because if you look at Wikipedia and many, many other references, Chris Thomas's name is, is down as the guy who played the keyboards on the record. And, in fact, as you say, he programmed it. So we've got a bit of a scoop there. I can remember to this day, you know, hearing it for the first time, and I thought it, it, it was something different. I don't know whether you, you was ever aware when the, when the Beatles came.
So how did you all cope with the success then? Because uh, you'd had the four singles out and then Son of My Father and it just shot up the charts. It was extraordinary. It went from 30 to 11 to 2, then number one for three weeks before Nielsen's Without You took you off. But, I mean, what a, what a change and, and happening so fast. How did you cope? We did cope, but the pressure, what, what, what's on you at the time to do promotion is phenomenal. I mean, God knows what the Beatles must have been like. You know, when the, I mean, it must have been frightening. We, we, we was doing enough. You know, we was going to country to country. We couldn't get over to Spain at the time because it was number one in Spain, but, and they wanted, wanted a video to, to show on, the, like, their top of the pops or whatever the corresponding one was of theirs. So they sent a team over, and we was playing at um, South Sea one, one evening, and in the afternoon, they got us to set the equipment up on South Sea Promenade, <laughs> and they shot a, shot, shot a video of whether or not they got permission from South Sea Council, what I don't know. Giorgio Moroda and Pete Bellotti uh, went on to write all the hits for Chicory Tip and, and others as well. Yep. What's Your Name, of course, being the next single. Yep. So how did that one come into play? Well, Roger obviously was in touch with Giorgio and being as Giorgio wasn't a performer, he, he didn't mind. I don't know quite what went on with with Roger and, and Giorgio, but um, they obviously made a little pact and he was quite prepared to write some more songs for us, you know, being as we'd had a, a, a especially a million seller. And, and What's Your Name, obviously, was, again, using the synthesizer, and uh, which, of course, became part of the sound. I mean, it really did change the chicory tip sound. When you when you listen to the, the very early stuff and then Son of My oh, Father yeah. onwards, it really defines chicory tip as, as the sound that it was, and it was so different from anything else that had been recorded. The Moog synthesizer had been featured on a few um, recordings, but it had never been used as the lead instrument. That was the, the defining thing, you know. Because just to clarify as well, the Del Shannon Runaway, that was a clavio, I believe, wasn't it? Which was a yeah. totally different instrument. Yeah. Now, I'm really going to test your memory now, uh, Rick, because when What's Your Name came out, it was released and it came quietly into the charts at 39 and 26 and 23 and 21. And everyone thought, I suppose, after four weeks that it wasn't going to make the top 20. Then all of a sudden, it jumped eight places to number 13. And then the week after, it crashed back to number 27. Yeah. Now, with very, very unusual chart placings. I know the guys were, were, were very, very, you know, down in the mouth about it, you know, but it, it didn't make the top ten, you know, being as we had a number one. In time, you've got to come back down to earth, you know. We were still doing promotion on Son of My Father in, in different countries, you know, coming out in different countries, and the promotion on What's Your Name wasn't as great as it should have been, you know, at the time.
follow-up to What's Your Name was The Future Is Past, and that, that never never charted at all. I think that, I think the guys didn't want to keep the Moog at, at the feature on it on everything, you know, so they, 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 tried, they tried something different, you know, and it didn't work, unfortunately, yeah. you know. So back but, came the Moog for Good Grief, Christina. Yeah, well, there you go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, it was round about that time that, that you actually left the, the band, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I, was, I was quite disappointed with the with the whole business, really. And the guys wanted, wanted to go in a different direction at the time. They wanted to do, do something, you know, like, like Deep Purple or Status Quo was doing at the time. The band, in my opinion, what wasn't that sort of band. So it was easier, easier that I, I, I left, you know. The entertainment business is not, not as people see it, you know. It's not all it's cracked up to be, you know. You were replaced in Chicory Tip by Rod yes. Clout, but no doubt uh, you had one eye on the progress of Chicory Tip as well, because obviously fond memories of the band. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rod was a, a, was a sort of heavier guitarist than I, I ever was, but um, I don't think he gave, gave the band ex- exactly what they hoped he was... Had one eye on the progress of Chicory Tip as well, because obviously fond memories of the band. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rob was a, a, was a sort of heavier guitarist than I, I ever was, but um, I don't think he gave, gave the band ex- exactly what they hoped he was going
Now, you missed out, obviously, on Good Grief Christina because that uh, made number 17 in the charts yeah. and, and that was it as far as the chart was concerned. And I think one of the big problems was because the follow-up was Cigarettes, Women and Wine, which Radio Luxembourg, I remember, played to death yeah. uh, back in 1973. But, of course, just the title of the song, Cigarettes, Women and Wine, back in 73, was a big no-no for the big radio stations. BBC thought it was a bad influence on, on, on the youngsters sort of thing, you know. <laughs> but um, at the time, it was classed as a no-no, you know, for the BBC. And if you didn't get the BBC behind you at the time, or the, although some records were a band, do go, do go on a number one. We, were, we wasn't that lucky. And, of course, it was another Maroda Bellotti, as was the yeah. follow-up, which was called IOU. And, again, it was the synthesizer which uh, came into play there. And, and IOU, in fact, I think was probably uh, the song which really started the big fade, effectively, from Chicory Tip, because when that one didn't hit, as well as Cigarettes, Women and Wine, the writing, I guess, was on the wall. And then there was just really Take Your Time, Caroline, which was much slower, ditching the the uh, synthesizer again but unfortunately despite airplay it didn't actually work out and then the final crack at the charts was one of the best ever chicory tip tunes I must admit called Survivor which was on Roger Easterby's new label which was yeah. Root back in 1975 yeah. not written by Maroja and Bellotti but very much in the style of it was wasn't it I've got to say that that, that was a terrific record it should, it should have you know charted but Roger, Roger's label at the time Root Records was very very young and sometimes you need time to um, to get a record label established. To my mind, that 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 should have definitely been a hit. It was a terrific record. Sadly, there, there was no more after that. I mean, that was basically the close of the book because, yeah. as far as I know, there were 30 tunes by Chicory Tip back in the 70s that were right. actually recorded. And yet there was just the one album, which was Son of My Father, of course. So 1975, Survivor came, brilliant record, flopped again, and that was the end of Chicory Tip. Do you know what actually happened? I think by that, that time, Barry had just left. So I was left Peter, really. I think the band had... For that time, it had its day sort of yeah. thing, you know. Even groups like Sweet, Slade and, and that, you know, that, that, they go for a time and then you, you can't go any further with the band at that time. Maybe maybe you can come back with the band at, at, at a later period, you know. Um, but some, sometimes bands just fade away, you know. And I, and I, th I think, I think Chickory Tip had had all the, all the success they was going to get at that time, you know. Now, Peter Hewson actually did some singing after that as a solo artist, we believe. Yes, he did, yes. I, I think he only put one, put one record out, and the name eludes lose me at the moment. It, it was with, uh, with a guy called Vince Clark, who had um, Yazoo, 
And Erasure, of course. Yeah, it, it was with him, as far as I know. Before he, he went professional with the band, he was an architect. I think he's gone back into that somewhere now. Brian Shearer disappeared before the band split up themselves and he was replaced by John Longley in the latter year. So what did Brian do after that? He's never given up playing. He went, in, he went into a little country band. Um, I, think it was called the, I think it was called the Gary Blackmore Band. And Barry Major? Barry came out and then he, he went into the pub business. He took a, he took a, a, a pub in Maidstone and he was there for quite a few years. And the other guy, of course, the, the one who replaced you, Rod Clout, what did he do after Chicory Tip? Um, he emigrated to Australia and he's still there. Now, there was, of course, a big reunion in 1996 to celebrate your, your own 50th birthday and, and Brian and Barry and you did a show together. Sadly, Peter had throat problems and work commitments so couldn't do it himself, but presumably he would have done so if he could. Oh, yes, I'm sure he would have done, yeah. Well, I don't know whether he was suffering with his throat at the time, but that, that was one of the reasons I'm sure he wasn't there. My other half, she organised it, Jane, and it was a complete surprise to me. Went through the doors and everyone I can think of from my past was there. Fantastic. So so there they were on stage, basically, waiting with yep. a space and a guitar for a certain Mr Rick Foster. <laughs> I'm afraid so, yeah. You had such great fun with it that um, there was something inside all three of you to say, well, look, you know, we, we could, you know, the magic's still there. We, we could actually get back together again. And that's what happened. In actual fact, myself and Barry were, were, do, were doing a little bit together at the time. We was, we was doing a few duos together and uh, people kept coming up to us and saying, oh, well, is the band going to get back together? I thought, well, if we're going to do it at all, let, let's, let's go for it now, you know. Within, within about a year, we was, we was up and running and we haven't looked back since. Was Peter actually asked to rejoin permanently? Was he involved in that, or was it just really the three of you that... Uh... No, 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 no. In, in, actual, in actual fact, um, what, what Peter, Peter came along to a couple of um, rehearsals and that, and uh, he, his, his voice wasn't, wasn't too great at the time, so uh, he, he bowed out sort of thing and let us get on with it, you know. So he's, he's given you the blessing, but it's a shame to hear that, you know, the voice went. Yeah, well, he, he, he'd got a throat problem at the time, and he, he only had to sing a few words... And he started coughing, you know. So it, it's almost impossible to think that um, the four of you will ever get back on stage again as well, a result of that. As I say, Bar- Barry, Barry is now down in Co- down in Portugal. So, um, he, but he he come he comes over every now and again. Be, be nice to get 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 the whole whole lot of us back together for a couple of gigs. So, so we would we wouldn't rule that one out. Oh no no no. No, that, I wouldn't rule anything out, no. What about your own best memory of being in the band, on the good old days in the early 70s, uh, Rick? I think Top of the Pops were, were, was, you know, just to be on Top of the Pops were, was an absolute a great, great memory. Well, Rick, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. I wish you all the best for the future, of course, and uh, keep the music alive. We will.